Hi everyone, this is the So Comfort YouTube channel and I am Amanda. I am so excited you are here to join me today to take a break from your busy life and learn a little bit more about the wonderful world of sewing. I'm gonna dive right into episode number two, which is the most common stitches that you will need to get started. The very first is called a straight stitch. A straight stitch is exactly what it sounds like. It goes in a straight line. You can go in a curve, but the stitches always are one after another. Front and back look identical. That is a straight stitch. It is used for almost any type of piecing that you will ever do in sewing. The quilt behind me uses a straight stitch even on those diagonals to make the butterflies. So a straight stitch is very common and we will use it the most as we start learning different projects. So the next stitch we're gonna talk about is our zigzag. Now a traditional zigzag, as you can see, goes left to right and the top and bottom look the same. This is a good stitch if you are trying to cover, say a piece of pipe cleaner or wire in a garment or a mask to make it stay and stand up. It's good for protecting your edge to prevent it from fraying, which is actually what you're seeing here at the top of my sample piece. This is called fraying is as the fabric is washed or handled, it breaks down the thread, the threads. A zigzag will help stop that. The third stitch we're gonna talk about is an elastic zigzag. Now, I'm not sure if you can actually see this, but it takes one, two, three stitches to the right, one, two, three stitches to the left at an angle. Now, this stitch is actually utilized the most in the garment industry. It's actually invented for lingerie. The elastic that goes on slips, panties, and other garments, undergarments, even swimsuits, because they require that this stitch stretches with the garment. An elastic zigzag was created to give the fabric gift. Now, the fourth one is actually used mostly in garments, and it's used mostly for hems. It is actually called a blind hem. Now, this one's a little different on front and back. On the front, we have a stitch, a peak, and another stitch, several stitches. Now, on the back, it's actually only caught in the center of the triangle. Now, the reason for that is that when you're hemming a garment, the stitching will actually go along the edge of the hem. And you only want the point to catch where the two fabrics come together so that when you turn it, you have a clean hem. It's really a powerful stitch, but it's kind of tricky to learn. So you're going to want to practice it several times before you actually try hemming a pair of pants or a skirt or dress or any other type of garment. And of course, that brings us to our fifth stitch, which is called basting. Now the difference in a basting stitch is that it's much longer than your normal straight stitch. It's still a straight stitch, but you usually use a four or five millimeter length setting on your machine. And the reason that you do this is because you want to be able to take your bottom thread. The bottom thread here is blue. And you want to be able to pull that thread and gather your fabric just 
just like that. And you want it more even than this. This is just me trying to show you what gathering looks like. You see it all the time in skirts and some different techniques of pants even have gathering at the waist when you do an elastic band. So that is very useful. Now, the last one I'm going to show you, I actually have to get to the sewing machine because it's actually called a back stitch or a tack. And it's used to start and stop your seams. When you sew, the, fab the two pieces of thread are looped through the fabric, but the ends are loose. So whenever you are making a garment or a pillowcase, a Nikki Lovey or a bag, any of those types of objects, you don't want the end of your stitching to come unraveled because eventually your whole project is going to come, un come unraveled. So I'm going to take it to the machine really quick so I can show you what a back stitch is. Some are automatic and some will re use the reverse button on your machine. So I'm going to show you both and then let me know if you have any questions. Okay y'all, I am here back at the machine so I'm going to go ahead and show you what it means to put in a tack. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually just start sewing. And I'm going to start with a straight stitch. And then I'm going to turn on my reverse button. When I turn on my reverse button, the machine's going to go backwards. And it takes three, I take three stitches. And then I go forward. One, two, three. And I go down my seam. To tie it off, I'm going to go turn on my reverse button again, and then I'm going to go one, two, three. Now you really do want to get the stitches on top of each other, but sometimes you miss a little bit. In this case, I normally would have both hands on the piece of fabric, um, which makes it easier. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. My machine, as you can hear, has an automatic cutter. I'm going to pull it out. And now we're going to do another one using the built-in tack function. You don't have to put your needle down, I just normally do. This is called a tack stitch. In the quilting world we call it tiny stitches because what's going to happen is the machine is going to stitch over on top of itself three times. And then you're going to go do your seam like normal. And the machine's going to use the button again and the machine does the stitching for you. So now I'm going to show you. A tack stitch is longer because it does use, it's a physical stitch that you have to do. So it's actually going to be longer. And then the back stitch that's automatic is shorter. Either one works, it'll hold your seam in place so that when you pull your fabric, whoops, okay, where's my stitch? Okay, like this, as you see, it doesn't pull apart that way. And there's my back stitch. So that's why you want to tie off the ends of your fabric. Now say you want to gather the waistband of a shirt or set a sleeve into a piece of, um, I'm sorry, put a sleeve into a setting. That's going to require something called a gathering stitch. Now a gathering stitch is just your straight stitch. So you're going to set your machine to whatever your straight stitch is. And then you're going to adjust your stitch length. Mine's right here and you're going to move it up to four or five millimeters and then you can go back to your sewing. You're not going to tie it off. Instead, you are just going to sew. When you get to the end, lift your needle, whether manually or not, pull your threads out just like this and snip them manually. 
the reason you do this is now you have a thread at the end that will allow you to gather your stitches. I'm not actually going to do that part um, because I'm actually holding the camera at this point. So there's your gather stitch. So there you have it, the top seven stitches that you are going to need in order to sew pretty much any project, whether a garment or home decor or some decorative items. So if you found this video to be helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the Sew Comfort YouTube channel. If you would like to continue the conversation with myself and other sewers around the world, please find us on Facebook in the private group, Sew Comfort with Amanda. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.